So, okay. Now we are in Friday again. And uh, we have this uh, Q&A session for tonight. Now tonight also we do not have uh, many questions. And um, if you have uh, uh, if you have some questions, you can write down in the chat. Or you can also, if you want to speak directly, then you can press the reaction button and uh, raise uh, raise your hand. Yeah? Then we can speak directly also. We can we will unmute you yeah? uh, if you want to. <clears throat> okay, let's go with the uh, uh, the first question uh, for tonight. Not not too difficult for tonight. No, not too not too tough. Okay. Can you see question one? All right. Okay. My mom, 84, asked me to teach her meditation, her walking meditation about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, Longer duration causes back pain. Sitting meditation on a chair, uh, 30 minutes about to about an hour. Rising, falling, not clear, hardly noticeable. I thought her sitting and touching. Okay, one. Is it too challenging for her at this age and a cancer patient to learn Vipassana meditation? Two, what about metta meditation for her? Three, how to guide her effectively? Abante, please advise. Thank you. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> of course, uh, when we ask these type of questions, uh, um, it also um, we have to go case by case. Uh, uh, sometimes it may not be effective for all of all older people. Uh, and also depending on their conditions and their sickness also. <clears throat> now, I assume that here, which I do not know your mother, I assume that, let's say, your mom is alert, and your mom is have certain degree of faith in Buddhism, and if the cancer is not too painful, although it's carrying it, perhaps maybe in... in remission or um, occasionally there are pain coming in but of course when we have to do this meditation it has to be free from the pain if not it's going to be difficult for anyone to start meditation huh? so <clears throat> so now the age is 84 it can be a challenge huh? it can be a challenge for of course for many people And, but the, the thing is that can we able to teach at this age uh, somebody who has at this age for some Vipassana meditation? Actually, yes, you still can. But uh, we don't expect some great results and so on. Eh? As long as they can able to master some kind of uh, mental peacefulness, some time of some mental clarity at certain part of the time, eh? uh, then it will be very wonderful. <clears throat> now, let's let's say you want to ask her to do some walking meditation, which is good. If she can able to walk 15, 20 minutes, then it's wonderful. If you can able to notice, uh, just like right step, left step, and let the mind just settle onto the step and don't let the mind, just remind her, don't let the mind goes into thinking, goes into, um, goes into distraction or thoughts about the day, you know. Uh, just to remind her just to stay with the present object like the steps right now. If you can able to do that, that would be very good. Yeah? That would be very good. The mind runs a little bit, 
once in a while you just to remind her just to come back again and and this type of walking meditation uh, for at this old age uh, of course uh, different when it comes to old age then you have back problem or leg problem or knee problem or muscle problem then some you know it cannot able to even to to walk off and hardly able very difficult to walk yeah? but <clears throat> I've 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 seen uh, that uh, in the past uh, during in the retreat uh, that there are yogis come in at 75 80 you know that they are having a hard time doing walking meditation but of course that here we are more gentle with them uh, gentle in the sense that we ask them to walk <clears throat> to walk in the sense that in the first few days uh, okay, just do 15-20 minutes and then you sit down for half an hour. Then you get up and walk again. Don't follow the timetable too much eh, for during in the retreat. Eh? <clears throat> then after that, after a few days or five or six days later, because of the walking they have been doing for you know, a few times per day, eh, sometimes <clears throat> their leg strengthens. And or or their their back problem or their knee problem become less painful, and they find that they can able to do a little bit more longer walking, which is also is good for them. You know? It in the sense of their health and in the sense of their clarity of the mind. Uh, so you don't push them so hard in the beginning and let them to do a bit of walking and then after a while you ask them to do a bit more sometimes they may do a bit less it's okay but just to remind them just to do a little bit more if they can they'll be good for them because it helped to strengthen their body in a certain in a certain way you know that is, that is my experience in the past uh, because of sometimes when you come to this age uh, sometimes you sometimes old people have a, a set mentality that the body is painful, the leg is painful, and then they begin to neglect the exercise, the walking. But if sometimes somebody were to encourage them, just to push them a little bit, they will start to walk. Then to remind them, to remind them, then they will walk. Uh, to remind them <clears throat> that they'll walk. Uh, uh. So too, like for example, when uh, Saidon Nyaya Ponika is in in uh, in Kuala Lumpur, the late Saidon Nyaya Ponika, yeah, when he's in Kuala Lumpur when, or he's in PJ when he goes for his medical checkup, now every now and then I have to remind him that uh, he get up and walk. Sometimes, of course, uh, with my little bit cheekiness, you know, and then I try to use different way, different method to make him walk and, and do all kinds of things. Uh, that one, <laughs> I'll keep it for myself. <laughs> but anyway, the whole purpose is to make them walk. Uh, when they walk, they become walk and then after that, they feel better. But you have to be patient. Uh, you have to be patient. You have to be patient to, to, to you know, don't expect so much of result. Just to accompany them sometimes, uh, just to for them to walk a little bit more and then it'll be very good. So if you are able to do 15 minutes of walking meditation, that is wonderful. Or if, if sometimes it can be a little bit longer, if the back pain is not so painful, then it'll be very good. Yeah? So this is wonderful. <clears throat> now sitting on the chair, uh, of course with the back pain, and it's good to sit on the chair. All right. So this is fine, you know, sitting on the chair, 30 minutes, half one hour also is fine. Just to make sure that uh, again, when people have a back pain, uh, sometimes sitting for an hour, it can cause some degree of back pain also because of the body is not moving. So you have to monitor. You have to monitor your mother in this sense that to just to check with her if the pain is getting more terrible and so on and on. Yeah? Now, in, in the sense of the meditation part, uh, if she cannot able to notice the rising and falling at this time, then it still is okay. Uh, if you want to teach her some sitting and touching, it's perfectly all right. Uh, uh, and sometimes also just to advise her just to feel the whole body 
just to just to remind her that her the the body is here in the present moment. No need to no need to think about the cancer. Don't don't think about the death. You know, think about the past. Or think about other children. Think about the husband. Think about well, all kinds of this. And you just uh, tell them to gently put the all the thoughts of put the thoughts aside, and then just bring the mind to the present. If it's the present, it's just be with the body, then be with the body. And then if it is a present, be with uh, some, de some degree of uh, some, some pulling or some aches here and there, and then be with it. You know? Just be, be aware of it. Just You have to keep reminding her in this sense because just like everybody else, you know, we forget to be mindful. And it's easy for us to forget to be mindful. Your job is just to, to do the same thing again and again, uh, to remind her, then just to keep her in the present moment. Uh, uh, just to keep her in the present moment, just to keep her in the, in the here and now. And that would be wonderful. Uh, don't, don't, don't think about too much about the rising and falling if you cannot able to notice them. Uh, taking more of a bigger object, like a present bodily object, uh, that would be wonderful, or some kind of un some degree of unpleasant feelings, then also it's good. Uh, then just to remind her, uh, remind her when we do this type of meditation again, uh, don't tell her, don't go into the, all the past story, don't go inside the story, don't go inside the, the imagination, even sometimes you may see, she may see light and she may see some kind of object or medit or mind object. Just remind her, don't go inside there. This is part and parcel of the how the mind may trick us into it. Yeah, something like that, some Dhamma talk with her. You know? Then it'll be very good. Yeah. That, 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 that one will be very good. Yeah. Now, when it comes to like, sometimes she may be sad about her cancer or may other diseases that is going through. Then you you also learn, you also teach her how to acknowledge, to accept the patient, uh, to accept the cancer or the other sickness that arising at this moment of time. Yeah? Is it just just to remind her that acceptance is much more greater than than falling into the sadness or thinking why why me why why I'm I'm the one who's having all these things uh, then kind of like shifting her mind in another way just to for her to be out of that out of that uh, uh, sadness or you know difficulty of the state of mind at during at this time. Now, once in a while, of course, if you ask about if whether we can do metta meditation or not, of course can. Yeah? Of course can. Uh, then this time also you have to learn to teach her to guide her a simple metta. You know, don't don't ask, don't do too complex. For example, uh, then here again you start off with oneself here. Uh, you start off with oneself, uh, then. Again, to remind her just to keep all the thoughts and everything away and then gently just sit there and feel oneself have that you have that you remind that yourself you have done a lot of good deeds in the past, what deeds have she has done and so on. Yeah? Have those deeds that she has done and then ask to ask her to recall back those type of deeds, you know, the good deeds. And then with that, it brings about some kind of joy, some kind of happiness in the present. And then with that happiness, uh, uh, that is a very good start because for mindfulness and concentration to settle in is that joy and that happiness that comes in. And then, then ask her to feel to wish her wish herself to be free from all kinds of harm and danger free from may she be well and happy in that sense you know? kind of like as if like you are standing outside and then you genuinely 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 wish herself to be free from all this harm and danger 
or to be well and happy or whatever whatever uh, words that you find that it's suitable for her that can able to arouse that metta, that goodwill for herself. Uh, then do it a few times and then generally then spread it out to the people around you. Uh, uh, spread it to the people around you, whether she knows them or do not know them and gently guide her to spread some metta. Uh, her mind may run a bit, then remind her just to come back again to the metta. Uh, uh, with the words, may they, may they all here be free from all kinds of harm and danger. And, and then you repeat those, verse, those verses and then, then we spread it to bigger again and then after that come back to oneself. Uh, not not too complex and uh, don't don't have to talk about concentration uh, mindfulness uh, this and that uh, this one is too sometimes is too much for them unless they are very interested to learn even at 80 you know who knows you know but most of the people they are not interested to learn all kinds of all these things they just want to have practical um, experience right now most of the time uh, uh, so 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 guide her whichever way that you can, however that you can, and to guide her in that this meditation. So sometimes you can do metta, for example, like in the morning you want to do a session of metta with her, then fine, well and good. Uh, check with her how she's doing. And then in the evening you want to do some vipassana meditation. Also it's good. Uh, you don't have to be like, don't have to be like um, uh, uh, fixed, like, fix in the metta or just fix in the uh, vipassana. Or sometimes you can do is, a, let's say you want to do a two weeks metta, also fine, well, well and good. After that, you want to change into two weeks of vipassana, also well and good. Yeah. Um, so, all you need to do is to guide her, is to bring her mind back to the present. Whether the present is a metta or vipassana, huh? just to bring her in the present, uh, then it will be tremendously very helpful for her. Now, this is, you know, one of the ways uh, that we can able to repay our parents. Uh, repay them by, in a sense of those, if those parents lack of faith, then we help them and we cultivate, we cultivate them with more faith. Then if those um, uh, with uh, greed, and then we cultivate them with generosity. If they have a hatred, then we cultivate them with more loving kindness and joy. Uh, and of course, those with uh, unwise, then we cultivate them with wisdom here. Uh, so here, here, when you teach them and you guide them, also is one of the ways that how we can able to repay our parents. So, so never underestimate these small little things that we can do. Uh, sometimes we are in the, you know, we learn the Dharma too big already. Uh, oh, I know this Abhidharma, I know this uh, rising, falling, I know this insight, I know this number one insight, I know this 13 insight, I know this Maga and Pala and all that thing. Then all these basic, basic fundamentals we forget. Yeah. We talk, we think that we are high and mighty. You know, so never forget. You know, never forget all these small little things what we can do for ourselves and also what we can do for our parents or our, perhaps our community in that sense. Yeah. So that's why sometimes when we learn the Dhamma. We, every now and then we have to go back to our basic fundamental in order for us to make sure that we are rooted to the ground. If not, uh, our our ego that comes together with uh, Dhamma, then it is can be, you know, it can be a hindrance for your for the development. So here, so here, then all this little meditation that however that we can guide to our parents uh, in this in their last stage of their life you know as the buddha put it you know then we guide her whatever that we can sometimes you never know that at this age uh, they they cultivate some degree of faith and interest in the meditation uh, 
And then, so then when they cultivate those interests, then they meditate, and then after that they die, or before death, they can able to recall this um, uh, meditation and also able to recall about their dana. If you you know help them to to do some dana or you help them in the sila, and if their last thought moment is thinking about these things rather than those things in the past, they do perhaps wrong things. Yeah? Then, if you can able to think of the right things and they can able to guide the mind looking in the right way or in the right view, in the right path, then you'll be done a tremendous, tremendous uh, service to them in this life and also in the next life. Yeah? So, so this is something that what we can do, even if you're not able to guide her effectively, but you try your best to give her some degree of wholesomeness to to help her some degree of wholesomeness then it'll be very beneficial to you and also to her yeah. all right this is something that we can we can this one nowadays nowadays uh, on, on another hand um, not not a noble a for path like, you know now people, as i said in this mindfulness thing uh, people have uh, like mindfulness and old age mindfulness and uh, pain management mindfulness and uh, parenting <laughs> mindfulness and this and mindfulness and that uh, so many so many things nowadays uh. so one of the ways is mindfulness with uh, together with the old age uh, so there are, there are people who are starting this type of mindfulness and they they are a group of they are a group of uh, uh, so called meditator you know it's all under the 70s 80s uh, uh, then it helped them in in their last stage of life and also is of course it's also it's wonderful it's very good yeah? so this is what you can do we 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 extract from our 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 understanding of mindfulness and our practice and then we just extract it a little bit adapt it to to our present state like for example here and your mom yeah? and then we we do that it will be very beneficial for her and then for ourselves also yeah? alright <clears throat> let's see the next question <clears throat> hey. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, question two. Can you all see? Can you all see? Okay, yeah, all right, good. <clears throat> question two, Bante. We always hear and read. The three, ev the three evils, greed, hatred, and delusion, or ignorance. Can I say the real evil is actually ignorance? Ignorance of anicca, dukkha, and anatta, and karma yet give rise to sankhara, mental formations, which can go either to greed or hatred or both. Uh, the, depend the dependent origination mentions avijja, avijja, pachaya, sankhara, with ignorance as condition, there are volitional formation as the root cause of dukkha. If one has right view or right understanding, no ignorance, then greed and hatred will not arise. So there are, tr so there are not three separate entities. Maybe there are only two entities. One, greed rooted in ignorance and two, greed rooted in uh, Hatred rooted in ignorance. Okay. All right. Let's see what we can do with this. Now, the three evil roots, for those who have not lit here before, three evil roots is this greed, hatred, delusion. Yeah? Because all our, all our 
evil roots, uh, whether it's connected to like even like jealousy, wrong view, and so on, uh, it is connected to all these three, uh, to the three evil roots. Uh. And then the opposite of them, of course, the non-greed, non-hatred, and wisdom, uh, the three wholesome roots. Uh. So these three evil roots is this. And... Uh, if you want to read about generally about the three evil roots, uh, there's one book. Where do I put it? I, 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 I can't remember, but I know there's somewhere in, this, in the library here. But um, there's one book called The Three Evil Roots by Venerable Nyana Ponika. And this is the German monk, uh, Nyana Ponika. He already passed away long, I mean, in the 80s or 70s, I think. He right? passed away, but he, he wrote a very nice about, about three evil roots. It's quite a wonderful writing, you know. All his writing, I find it is quite, quite relevant to the practice and also the understanding of the Dhamma. So it's one of my, one of my go-to, uh, uh, author that when when I want to talk when I want to have dharma then I go to this a few authors I find it uh, they are very um, rooted into the Buddhist dharma and the understanding of them is is wonderful. So one of the one of the book is called the Three Evil Roots by Venerable Nyana Ponika, Nyana Ponika, uh, <clears throat> German monk. Now. Your questions, can I say that it, e, the real evil is actually ignorance? Then you, you, you go on to say that, of course, ignorance is anicca dukkha anatta, which is, which is true, you know, and ignorance also, ignorance of the four noble truth, ignorance of karma and vipaka, things like that, you know, or dependent origination, which is also true, you know. Now, <clears throat> ignorance Sometimes when I give talk, uh, you hear that um, mother of all defilements, which is ignorance. But the problem is that now uh, we cannot confront ignorance directly, uh, because you don't even know that you are ignor ignorance. If right now now, uh, if you know that you have a lot of ignorance, uh, you will have given up everything by now. You will have uh, donned a rope by now. You have become a monk or a right, nun right at this moment. And then you really want to go and uh, get out of this samsara. But you don't want. You don't want because while we are in, in, in the sense of ignorance, we don't even know it. We don't even know that we are in a state of ignorance. Even we read about it, that there is ignorance in us. And yet, we cannot able to catch hold of it. No? You say that if one have right view or right understanding, then greed and hatred will not arise. Theoretically, it's yes. But that statement, uh, that statement of yours is only applicable for an Arahantone and the Buddha and so on. Below that, all below that, that means people like you and me and the rest, we have ignorance. We have ignorance, more or less ignorance only. But the problem is, as I said, we cannot see this ignorance. No matter how much we read and how much right view and how much we dig into the Four Noble Truth, dig into the Karma and Vipaka, dig into the Dependent Origination, we cannot get out. We can, the, 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 the ignorance is still there. And yet you do not know where is it. It's not like it's not like hatred that it comes up. Uh. When hatred comes up, uh, you can feel it. And the greed that comes up, uh, you can feel it there. Oh now I have a lot of greed because it's there. But ignorance when I mean, it is there, you don't even you don't even think that it is ignorance. Sometimes it disguises as something as wisdom, as something as this one. So a lot of, of course, when you say that, when greed is arises, it's rooted in ignorance. You are right not to say that you are wrong when, when hatred comes up. There's ignorance also. Yes, it's true. But ignorance is always behind. Greed and hatred is always that, like the front. 
Uh, they are the front. Uh, uh, they are the, as I you know, you see, you see, this greed and hatred uh, and all defilements, uh, they are like the generals, you know. They go fight the war. Uh. Ignorance is like the emperor. He sits in the palace. Uh, he is the, he's the, he's the, um, he's the like a uh, principal one that is making all the generals to go and fight which war, which, which, um, how to strategize and everything, you know. So ignorance is always at the, at the behind. So you cannot, you cannot fight it directly. You cannot hurt it directly because what is it, whatever that is in front of it is all this ignorance, like jealousy, wrong view, and so on. That is all in the front. Uh, so ignorance, you cannot do anything much about it. And in the dependent origination, when we, we discuss about ignorance, uh, avijja, uh, when we discuss ignorance, uh, this ignorance is a, is a past tense. In the sense that because of the past, uh, because of the past ignorance you have, then it arises this volitional formation. And volitional formation also is the past according to the dependent origination. So what is the present? The present here is when you have rebirth consciousness. And then when you rebirth consciousness, you have, then you have this uh, nama rupa. And then you have these six senses, then you have contact, then you have feelings, then you have craving. It is this craving that we have to do something about it. You see, in the Four Noble Truth, it says that tanha is the, is the cause for suffering. It then put there delusion. The Buddha specifically says tanha. Why craving? Because craving happens in the present. We only can deal with it when it's in the present. So, so when we, although when it's when you say that craving is in the present, but again, below it is the ignorance. We cannot do much about that ignorance, but we can do something about it, craving. Because when we're able to cut the craving, we also cut the ignorance in that sense. You see, <clears throat> when we develop you know, vipassana, you know, uh, satipatthana as a whole, uh, uh, all the anicca dukkha, the anatta, that you you seeing it again and again in different ways, in this way and that way, here is to change your perception from a wrong perception into a right perception from you seeing from permanency uh, or, or which is nicha and then you see as blissful or sukha or you seeing as atta or self you know to change it through satipatthana to see it as anicca dukkha anatta impermanence unsatisfactoriness and non-self. Yeah. And to change that perception, it takes tremendous amount of effort, tremendous amount of effort. And it takes a lot of patience, a lot of sustainability and so on, you know, to a for us to be able to change that perception. That perception of all this wrong way of looking at things is because of behind it again is the ignorance. The ignorance is the one that it shoots out all this, seeing it as uh, seeing it as permanent, seeing it as satisfactory, seeing it as self. It is because of that ignorance is behind it. So so when when we do this satipatthana, uh, when we do the satipatthana, we when you see all these anicca, dukkha, anatta in so many ways and, and the different types, the different way the anicca, dukkha, anatta is presented, then of course we give the name of different insight, you know. But after all, all of them are just anicca, dukkha, anatta in various ways. Huh? Huh? So, 
So the thing here is this. Because of the ignorance, uh, then how we view life and how we view our surrounding and through our senses, uh, we, we see them as something is pleasant, something is permanent, something is beautiful, something is uh, self. And then with that, we see, then the craving arises, the hatred arises, the greed arises, the jealousy arises, the wrong view arises, and all kinds of unwholesomeness arises because of that perception is wrong. The perception is because of the ignorance is there. So, the way of Satipatthana is that we change the whole structure of our mental, the, the, the mental forces or is the mental path from the wrong path into a right path. And when we change that forces to see Anicca Dukkha Anatta again and again and again in order to counter the its opposite of Nicca, Sukha and Atta to change these things. Therefore, when we change this, that one, we also kill the ignorance. Now, in the ten factors, uh, in the ten, I forgot to. I I was thinking about that particular uh, the ten factors. I thought I want to put it down here, but after that, I forgot about it. But anyway, in the ten factors, you know, there's called five higher factors. After, you see, uh, for uh, anagami, uh, anagami, the third stage uh, of enlightenment. For an anagami, for a non-returner, then he already eradicate greed and hatred, uh, greed and, or ill will here, uh, greed, hatred, or greed and ill will. Then he also eradicates uh, skeptical doubt, that dedicate, uh, eradicate um, the attachment to the rites and rituals, and eradicate the wrong view of self or the or I or the wrong view of self or identity view or they call it yeah so the, these five factors five factors is be eradicated but he, he cannot is not able to eradicate another more another five more which is craving craving for existence which is one is the craving for existence of fine material of this is the Brahma world. Uh, second one is the craving for the Arupa world. Arupa means immaterial world with beings that arises without body, only arises with mind only. Uh, then after that, you have third one is the conceit. Fourth one is the restlessness. And the fifth one is the uh, is the ignorance. Yeah, the fifth one. So the five here is the five higher factors. So you see the craving here, the craving uh, when we deal, when when the path and fruit of the path of arahanship when it arises, it immediately eradicates everything. It, it, it eradicates everything. It eradicates, and notably here, it's the Ignorance also is eradicate. But when the eradication takes place, uh, the yogi also do not know. Uh, there's no like something like when you are hatred, then you know hatred. You can feel it. Uh, when you have greed, you know greed. You, have, you feel it. Uh, that is that is very different level of the state of mind. Here is the ignorance here is that you're eradicating at the at the what level? Anusaya level, the latent level. Yeah, yeah you, you, are, you are eradicated at the latent level. Not that it already come out in the mind or, or in the actions or speech. That this is at the latent level. So, so this one, when we eradicate at the latent level, the ignorance at the latent level, then it cannot able to produce in the mind, it cannot able to produce in the thoughts. In the in the thoughts or in the speech or in the action, so only that 
path consciousness of an arahant uh, that you can able to eradicate everything. Uh, even the anagami don't realize that the ignorance is still there. He knows theoretically, la, you know, he knows that theoretically that okay, I have not, I've not, um, I've not, I'm not an arahant yet, you know, but he doesn't know, still doesn't know where the ignorance is. Because again, as I said, ignorance, uh, it all comes always at the background. So, what he can do is that he has to practice higher right until arahanship, then only he can able to erad eradicate everything. So, there's no other way to eradicate this ignorance. Uh, so, no matter how much you read and how much you think that you know about the Dhamma, uh, the ignorance is still there because it's, it is at the latent level this at this time. Uh, uh, of course, when you are greedy at when you are greedy at that time, at that moment of time, or you are having ill will at that moment of time, ignorance is also there, or delusion is there, is at the background. Uh, but anyway, the only way that you can able to 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 eradicate this ignorance is at the path of arahanship only. Yeah. So, they are not three separate entities, but they are only two entities. Maybe they are only two entities. I, you cannot say that because greed is a mental factor. Hatred is a mental factor. Ignorance also is a kind of a mental factor also. It's just that it is not obvious. It is not prominent. Yeah. It's a mental factor also. That's why they, they put it as greed, hatred, delusion. The Buddha put it as greed, hatred, delusion. Uh, all forms of defilements is rooted in ignorance. <laughs> Not only greed and hatred only. Jealousy also, in a way, is connected to, to, to this. Your restless mind also is connected. Your sloth and topper also is connected to ignorance too. Your laziness of mind and so on is all connected with ignorance. So, ignorance is like uh, is got is all all the branches that is goes out and it's connected to all the unwholesome mental factors. So you cannot run away. So, it's so all this all this uh, unwholesomeness they, they are all connected to to ignorance. But ignorance is a mental state. So that's why. We call it greed, hatred, delusion. And we have greed, hatred, delusion in that sense. So, these are all uh, the, the questions. I don't have any more already. Okay, let me see. You. Anybody have uh, questions or uh, no, verbal questions? <clears throat> let me see what the hell. Or if you want to have uh, questions from the uh, who, uh, let me see, from the Facebook also you can you, you can type in if you want to. Huh? <clears throat> so if you have uh, any questions, if no questions, then it's perfectly all right. You know, no problem. Okay. No questions, huh? All right. No question. Fine. Good. We can uh, call it a night. Huh? 